be talking about a case. She's a, a woman who's a 70-year-old and Caucasian. She's been relatively healthy, has a distant smoking history, but was heavy. She smoked two packs a day for 35 years. And she presents to her primary care doctor because she's been losing weight without really trying to lose weight. She hasn't changed her diet, she hasn't changed her exercise, so felt that that was concerning. She has some gastroesophageal reflux disease, but otherwise no other real problems. Because of her smoking history and this weight loss, her primary care doctor is concerned and gets a chest x-ray. And this unfortunately does show a mass in her right lung. This is followed by a CT scan, which confirms the presence of a 2.5 centimeter mass in the right lung, and unfortunately also significant amount of adenopathy in the mediastinum, and smaller nodules that are scattered throughout both lungs, and a few nodules in the liver as well. She then is sent to get a PET scan, and that confirms that all of the sites seen on the CT are actually hypermetabolic and concerning for malignancy. Brain MRI is negative. She has a biopsy done of the main mass in the lung, and that confirms that this is indeed lung cancer, adenocarcinoma, which is confirmed by the positivity of TTF1. They do additional testing, uh, molecular testing, that we would hope is done. The EGFR is negative, ALK is negative, ROS1 is negative, KRAS is negative. She also has PDL1 testing, and that comes back at 35%. The patient has stage four adenocarcinoma of the lung, with metastases in the liver and lung. She has a pd one expression level of 35% and also has no known driver mutation, so she started on standard chemotherapy, a platinum doublet, with the addition of bevacizumab. After two months on treatment, she comes back with a CT scan, and this shows that there's been no progression of disease, everything is stable, but symptomatically she actually feels better and has started to gain a little bit of that weight back. The patient is a 70-year-old woman who seems like she's otherwise in very good shape, who presents with a classic presentation of lung cancer, classic meaning that there really isn't a standard way that people come in. Unexplained weight loss in a patient with a smoking history really should trigger the workup that she had. And in fact, she would actually have been eligible for screening. This was not something that was being done routinely even five years ago, but after the NLST results, we do recommend screening for patients like her who have at least a 30-pack year smoking history and who are over 55 years of age. So regardless, she came in with the weight loss and was found. If she'd had screening, who knows if she could have been found when that tumor was smaller, but she's found now with stage four. In a patient with newly diagnosed metastatic lung cancer, we know that there's a range in how people do. Uh, I try not to talk with patients about this is the average because I found that if you have a long discussion with someone and you bring in a number, that's all that they remember hearing and they don't hear all the number, words around that number. So we talk about ranges and that some people just don't respond to treatment and have a short time, which could be months, just a few months. And then some people have very good responses to treatment and live for a number of years. And I have metastatic lung cancer patients I've been caring for for over 10 years. So we sort of talk about those ranges with people. And so with this patient who's newly diagnosed, otherwise fit, with not a really high disease burden, that would be the kind of discussion that we would have. And I would assume if she has a response to treatment, she likely has a few years. If her cancer is refractory to treatment, it's gonna be shorter. She also, we know, has started with chemo. We, and we know it was stable with her first imaging, but it was tolerating it pretty well and was going to be able to continue. We know that her pdl one expression was not negative. It was just less than 50%. So she'll be able to go on to immune therapy next. And we know that some people who get immune therapy have prolonged responses that can go on three, four, or more years. So she's got some reason to be hopeful. We also know something about the molecular driver, like what she doesn't have, but we haven't done the full panel. So maybe she's gonna have a RET mutation or a MET exon 14 skip mutation or something else that's targetable that's gonna bring in more options. So when I think about what's her prognosis and how she's gonna do, she's starting off fit with a limited disease burden with some response to treatment and has many, many options moving ahead. So there's a lot of different paths that she could be on.